Peace, peace. We're back once again. Another episode. That's my brother Shemel. We're having another conversation um, as we've done in the past. Uh, and I have none other than Michael, the copper child. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the people once again. They already know who you are. But... Yes, sir. My peace was good. It's the copper child, Mike L. For those of you that don't know, and uh, I'm, I make stop motion animation. I make these crowns like you see me wearing. Let me see how I'm going to put it. And uh, we talk about comic books and things that are comic book related. And today we're going into the Eternals. We're going to be talking about the Eternals and what we thought. We'll give a little review. Indeed. You know? Indeed. Yeah. Um, Eternals. We're going we're gonna to get into that. Um so I think last time we had a discussion um, when we kind of alluded to having, having this discussion today about the um, Eternals, you said, you said something about the Eternals in terms of the, the reception that it got. So I want you to kind of speak to that and then I'm going to lead – I'm going to follow up with that. Okay, yeah, like people weren't feeling the Eternals. Like uh, from from what I saw after the movie came out, people it got bad reviews, and the action figures they didn't sell well at all. They stood on the shelves. Although I still have faith in the action figures, sometimes they just go up in value for whatever reason. It's mysterious, but. So I still have faith in the action figures. But as far as the movie, people were, were disappointed. And uh, I can understand why. I can understand why. I can most definitely understand why. But I think if I understand, which I don't, I don't understand the story. I don't really understand the movie. And the reason why is because I must admit, every time I watch this movie or try to watch this movie, I fall asleep. And it's, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, I don't know what it is, but I fall asleep. Um, but I think it's important to understand the story of the Eternals, to understand the whole Marvel Universe, from what I gather, from what I gather. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, yeah, I mean. But I will say this. I will say this. To, there's a couple of points to what you're saying. Uh, I personally... Um, I was able to watch the whole, for the most part, watch the whole thing. And um, I got the story, you know, and I, I'm going to try to give base, and I'm basing it based on what I've studied. You know what I'm saying? You know me, I go into the metaphysics of it. It's a very metaphysical movie. Um, that being said, to your point, I totally understand why people didn't like it. And I'm, that, that may seem like a paradox or a contradiction. I'm going to explain why. Um, one of the main things that threw me off was, was the brother, the character played by the brother. Um, he, um, for those who don't know, if you have not seen, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and just put the solo on you. So that, um, Festos, Festos. Right? So that's the character right there. So we're going to get into that character very shortly, but I want to speak to that. He was, first off, almost all of the characters, if you follow Eternals from the, from the comic book perspective, almost all the characters were different in the movie than they were in the comic book. And you have to do your research or, or you have to have actually been up on the Eternals to know this. But the character played by that brother is not the same character in the comic book. In the movie, he's a homosexual man, right? Um, he's married to a man. They adopt a child and all of that. You know, he he's he doesn't eat. The original character is, is a person who's in shape. This guy's totally out of shape. 
and original character has a has a hammer. Um, the word Phaestos is all of first of all of the characters of Eternals are based off of mythology, either Greek mythology or Babylonian mythology, and um, and basically, you say you say I don't know why they they mooked them. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know. Yeah, it was the purpose. Yeah, it was unnecessary. It was it was totally unnecessary. Um, yeah, unless they, it was um, programming, or I believe it was you know, just to. Yeah, I mean that's the only. I believe it was. It, there's a couple of things. It wasn't just him, but he was the most blatant. You know what I'm saying? It was. Yeah, it was horrible. I mean, yeah, yeah. it yeah. wasn't. It was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's the way it made me feel when I saw his scene. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. When they it first was... ended, when he, you know, it's like, yeah, that was like, come on, man. To be honest, to be honest. Yeah, that's real. That's real. It wasn't even, it wasn't even um, important. It wasn't even, it wasn't even needed in the whole story. It wasn't even needed. And um, it was a couple of things like that. But like I said, to that point, it seemed that with that, along with certain other ones, that they were pushing to a certain community. Right, to attract also, a certain demographic. Yeah. Certain demographic. Also, the sprite character. Yeah, that was she. That was a good actor. Now, this is this was a in the movie. This is a this is supposed to be a grown up and a elf, you know, an eternal soul trapped in a young girl's body. Right, look, but looks like a boy. I'm a yeah, boy. Yeah. Looks like a boy and is attracted in love, right, with a man. So that kind of spoke Icarus, to, right? Yeah. Icarus. So it gave I'm gonna keep it, it gave pedo vibes. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna keep it honest. Yeah, yo, that's a good point. It it gave that type of vibe. That's a good me. point. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Cause that's exactly what it what it looked like. Yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. Yeah, it it it, it looked it totally like that. It looked totally like that, and you could tell that was by design. So it's like, um, wow, yeah, 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 man. Um, there was a Cause, couple because because you have compassion. You know, you look at Sprite the character, and you you, you kind of feel compassion. You know, what I'm saying it struck. Like you know, like that sucks to be in. To I don't know. That was like a that's a horrible situation to be in. I feel of Sprite as a as a human being to be you know like that whole yeah. But but the crazy dynamic or whatever they were trying to display it was yeah. That'd be a horrible life. You know what I mean? The and the thing is that the original Sprite. I felt sorry for Sprite. Yeah, you you do in a way, but it's just like. <laughs> There's other things. It's, it's just, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I didn't have a lot of sympathy for a lot of the characters, personally. Okay. That that's just me. Um, I mean, if you're gonna take the movie seriously at all, then get this. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, from from a story standpoint, just just from a story. You know, of course we know it's fiction, but just from a story yeah. standpoint, I didn't have a lot of sympathy. It, it it just didn't get me like that. And that's me personally, but yeah. the the um the original character in the comic book is is a boy, right? Actually, is a boy. It's a little boy, eleven year old boy. Later on, like um down the line, they started switching the gender. They would they would alternate. If you read up on it, Sprite because Sprite is. The word sprite is the name of a fairy. You know, that's why they say it is um, aligned with the Peter Pan character, right? And then think about the drink sprite. The drink sprite. That comes from um, mythology. That's come from the, the, um, the mythological fairies and all of that stuff. So sprite is a trickster, right? Able to mutate and do things of that nature. But the original character in the comic book is a boy, Ajax, which comes from Ajax, the Greek hero, 
the original character is a man. Um, Makari, who is a play off the word Mercury. So if you if you notice, they say Makari, but Makari is phonetically Mercury. That's the Greek god of the messenger of the gods. Fast play. And that's why Mercury is fast, right? Yeah. Quicksilver is fast. Yes. That was original. The original character is, is a man. It's just certain things that they did, you know, in that context. A lot of gender swapping. A lot of gender swapping. So they did a lot of gender swapping. Then they emasculated um, the brother on, the, on it. So a lot of that, you know, if you were following Eternals, from the standpoint of a comic book, yeah, you'd be disappointed. Absolutely. And even just, mm. even outside of that, um, just looking at it, you saw me, I didn't even, I was never up on Eternals as a comic book character whenever I did um, collect comic books. And um, just me looking at the stories, like a lot of that stuff was just, it's like, why? Why you even have that? You know what I'm saying? It took away yeah, I think it took away from the what it really could have been to me. I think maybe it was a hard story to tell. And and I kind of think like the uh what is it, the deviants? I think it was kind of corny for them to be like savage animals. Like right. I just think that was kind of corny. Huh? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because the original deviants. In the comic book, they're not all animals. They're actually like equivalent. Whatever they were, creatures. Yeah, creatures. They're actually, the original deviants in the comic book are equivalent to the Eternals. They're like humanoid, human, they're human okay. too. Some of them humanoid, are. Humanoid, yeah. Yeah, they're humanoid. Um, and they have powers, etc. So that wasn't, you know what I'm saying? So that took yeah, away. Yeah, that kind of made it like, yeah, it made it like. Animals are, are like you're scared of animals, alien animals. That's what it seemed like. They seem like alien form of animals. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. They didn't seem like intelligent life forms. Right, exactly. So it, it downplayed, you know, the, the original characters. That 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 was yeah. kind of bad. Um that being said, for me, if you could get past that. You know what I'm saying? The fact that they, you know, the agenda that they were playing and the different character, how they strayed away from the original characters and get into the metaphysics of it, it's a lot of science dropped in the movie from the very beginning. All right. Yeah, see, yeah, I mean, I get all of that. Even, like, Fausto, like, what I was impressed and what I always... The reason, I guess, why I marvel over this movie is because the way technology was introduced the way they proposed that technology was introduced to man like i still think there's something to that like how did you know where did we learn how to weld um metals like and deal with metals and like how did we learn that like you know who you know how did we learn that um how did we learn how to navigate the seas you know you know that they you know who invented the wheel like <laughs> all those things that they you know kind of teased or entertained, I should say. Um, like, I just found that, you know, I just like the idea of, of, of having a story around that. So I, I thought that was cool. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that kind of also speaks to the whole idea. Um, it's almost like the ancient aliens type scenario where, where you have the stories of the gods, right? in ancient times being told from the perspective of quote unquote aliens, people from other beings from outside extraterrestrials coming in and using technology. But then when they tell the story, it's just like that period in Babylon when they, they was doing the story of Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh was one of the, um, he's one of the Eternals. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so Gilgamesh is actually from the ancient Sumerian yeah. text, mythology. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. In that movie, he's one of the he eternal. Was the eternal. You know what yeah, I'm exactly. 
You see, so that's why, because I know you know all about, you know, I mean, not all about, but I know you yeah, you study, you right. know, ancient uh, Samaria, ancient Kemet, mm -hmm. and that, you know, you, I figure you'd be able to make a connection, you know yeah. what I mean? You know, immediately and throughout time as you, you know, put pieces of the puzzle together, you know, and so I figure you might find it interesting because of, uh, you know, little things like that, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Frog Knight says, gender swap and emasculation and strange agendas make recent Marvel productions unwatchable. I, I would agree. I would agree. It, it, it definitely make, it makes it hard, if not unwatchable. It, because that certain ones, I, I'm going to be honest, that's just me. Certain ones I don't watch. This one I was able to watch just because I knew the science of it. If, if it didn't have the science in it, I wouldn't, I would not have watched it to the end. Yeah, yeah, like like I tell you, man, like like for real, I did watch it. I think I watched it twice, but like I said, the way I recall movies nowadays, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to crawl. But I tell you, like I was trying to watch it this morning, and I kept falling asleep, and I hate to say it, but to fall asleep on that movie and wake up, it makes you question the acting. Like the acting wasn't all that good. Like, what's this lady's name in real life? Like, I maybe I'm not one to judge acting or whatever. But what's her name in real life? Uh, Jolie, what's her name? Want to play Athena? What's her name? Uh, Angela Jolie. Jolie. Something. Angela Jolie. A a yeah. Okay. Angela Jolie. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I thought her acting was. I didn't like her acting in this, and I know she's considered to be a good actor, but. To fall asleep and then to wake up in the middle of it and then she's possessed. <laughs> I was like, it just didn't seem like. And also when uh Gilgamesh, when he when he when they told her that that uh Ajax died, when they told him that Ajax died, and then Gilgamesh dropped the pie on the floor, like I thought that was bad acting. Yeah, yeah. You remember that part? Yeah, I remember that. Was that I bad? Was that? It, 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 it was a lot of bad acting. It was a lot of bad acting. When I say a lot of bad acting, it was just not, it wasn't impressive. And to Angelia, Angelia Jolie, uh, in reference to that, I find that this is my take on it. A lot of the so called big names that were introduced as of recent to the Marvel, um, Cinematic Universe? Yeah, the Marvel Universe, to act in these movies, they haven't done well. In my part, like, they don't carry, it's like, you're not impressed. I but definitely they, wasn't they impressed. Them. You know what I'm saying? I definitely wasn't impressed. I think, oh, but, like, yo, I, I, I like the wardrobe. Like, I think her wardrobe was dope, like, what she wore, and I think everybody's wardrobe, like, I like the wardrobe. What do you think about that? I mean, the wardrobe is cool, but that, but to me, that's expensive. I mean, I, know I, I, don't even, I don't even like special effects, wardrobe, all all the outer stuff. I expect Marvel to be on point with that. I don't expect a, a cheesy production in that realm. But all that is cool. But if the story and, and the weapons, is like, whack, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you, if the story and the acting is whack. You know, the the other stuff can only carry so far. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. What about Arsham? How you pronounce it? Arsham. Arsham. Yeah. So Ars was that was like the Most High? Was that the Most High? I don't get it. No, Arsham was the Demiurge. Is the Demiurge the Most High? Do we need to pull up the definition of a Demiurge and then compare it to what no, Marvel? No, Demiurge. Was? Demiurge. This is what Bobby Hammond talks about. That's why the name of this is called. Eternals Review, Demiurge, Elohim, and Nephilim. A Demiurge is a false god. So mm. there's Demiurges. There's, there's positive or benevolent and malevolent Demiurges. So they would be considered in Gnosticism like the creator gods or the gods that um, rule affairs of men. This one, okay, so first off, let, you have to look at the name Arishem. Arishem breaks down into two names in Hebrew. 
One is Ari, which means lion, and Shem, which means name or renown, right? You can even go further. Shem is used in Judaism as Hashem because what happens is, is that people who practice Judaism, those who say that they're Jewish, um, they say they're not worthy to say the name of God. They can't pronounce the, um, yeah, they can't pronounce the tetragrammaton, the yad he wav he. So they'll say Hashem, right? So that's lion of Hashem or the name of lion. So there is a demiurge by the name of Yaldabaoth or Yaldabaoth. When you look up Yaldabaoth, that is a malevolent God that is equivalent to Yahweh, some would say, in the Gnostic text. There's a book called the, the, oh man, the secret, oh man, it, the secret something of the Egyptian Gnostics. I forget the secret something or secret text or secret something, whatever. You, you, just Greg Braden, who wrote the book? Jean John Derolis. Let me look it up real, real, real quick. I had I had it up for real real quick. I had it. Um now you see now you see how you going in, Shem. Let me see. Secret. You see how you going in? The secret books of Egyptian Gnostics. That's what it is. Okay. Right? So when you when you get into that, Yaldabaoth is equivalent, some would say, in the Gnostic text to Yahweh. Because Yaldabaoth said, I am God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That is the jealous God. And in that text, he's having, a, in the Gnostic text, he's having a conversation with Sophia. And Sophia says, there is another God before you. That's the God on earth, referring to human beings. And then Yaldabaoth says, I'll kill them all and make them worship me. So that's your context. In the drawings of Yaldabaoth, you see he has a lion head or a lion face. Some would have with just a lion head with the with the body, or some would have the lion head with a serpent body. But that's Yaldabaoth. So Yaldabaoth is basically the um, the demiurge that you would call Arashem. Now look at Arashem now. Again, if you watch it now and you see the, the headpiece. Mm -hmm. It looks like a Lego block or something. Right. If you see that and then you see the 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 pictures of Yaldabaoth or the il illustrations of Yaldabaoth, you're going to see where they drew that from. Okay. Did he have horns? Actually? Yeah, it was like I a horn, horn. On the side, right? Yeah, horn piece. Yeah. Yep. So that's that's the demiurge. So remember, they were saying they were calling so them celestials. So, so the demiurges were the celestials, because Arashem was a, a celestial. Remember that. And there's many different celestials. And there's many different and celestials. So, and so they're trying to harvest humans. Yes. At the right time. So they feed off the energy of the humans. That's what the demiurge does. You know, what I'm saying like I said, Bobby Hammett talked about it. Brother Panic talked about it. They feed off the energy of. Of the people. Now I used to when I was young, I used to that's what I used to I used to imagine that. Like when I was in um I would say elementary school, I would imagine that there's beings that are invisible that are feeding off of people's negative emotions, just sitting there like as if you're feeding birds, throwing bread, these creatures are just siphoning like a spiritual energy in the form, like a negative emotion from you. But it's 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 not physical. It's it's emotion. It's intangible. But yeah, because I would I would just I would just imagine that, and I would also imagine that because I would pe see people act so crazy. I would imagine that. You know, people are being possessed by invisible entities. And 
also, I would imagine that like uh, people could feed off of aspects of of food, not people, but beings, entities. This is just my imagination as a child. Like I would think that like if there's like blood on the floor, somehow an energy, an entity could absorb energy from that blood. Just from I don't know. I just felt like there was an energy coming from from living things, like or even just the, even a piece of meat on a table. I felt like there's a, a spiritual aspect of it that can be consumed. I just had to say all of that. Yeah, no, no, you right on point with that. You you speak to a couple of things on that. Um, because in the Bible it says the spirit is in the blood. And when we speak about spirit, you're speaking about the energy. So um, like I said, you know, with the demiurge. Maybe that's where I got it from. Maybe like I heard that, went to church and heard that and right. just was imagining. Cause I did, I mean, this is just stuff that I'm almost embarrassed to say I think like that. You get what I'm saying? Right. Or thought like that. But you know, because it just sounds so far out there, maybe to the person who doesn't have an open mind. Yeah. I mean, to the average, I guess, person who's not into who haven't dealt into the esoteric. Yeah, it is. It is crazy. If you, if you just a, yeah, if you just a regular person, yeah. But a lot of us in the conscious community or who dealt with some type of conscious information, this is not hard at all. I mean, even Dr. York books have talked about Leviathan, Leviathan operating off of um, adverse six, forces. Six, six, yeah, the 666. Yeah, the energy off of that. Um, I've heard um, lectures with um, Dr. Phil Valentine talk about that. It, like, it's very, like I said, I already mentioned Bobby Hemming. That's a very common thing. Even if you look at it from the aspect of, let's say, the, um, the practices such as um, voodoo, you know, and things of that nature. You talked about the, the blood. You talked about the meat and all of that. It's, it's very, that's a very common thing, particularly in, in West African um, spiritual disciplines. It's recognized that. that that's a recognizable thing. And emer emotion is energy in motion. So if you think about the energy in motion, what do you eat food for? You eat food for energy. There's a term that's used called food for the gods. You ever heard that term? Yeah. That's a common term. So what does that mean? <laughs> to be food for the gods means you literally are a substance to be consumed and maybe not in a physical sense, but almost like a psychic vampire sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I, I really feel I really feel like 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 that's real. Yeah. And depending on your frequency that you vibrate on depends on the type of entities that might may have access to you. You may be able to block some of them out if uh if you're not on a similar frequency, they just probably won't be able to to access you, but the way people act, I mean, I've seen people act crazy. Um, I'm not sure if that's all them. I think some people are possessed by uh, what? I don't know. But some of the behavior I see, especially if you look online, YouTube, people behave in ways that make you think and say, I just don't know what would possess you to act like that. <laughs> Brother, listen, before we got on this live stream, I kid you not, I pulled up YouTube. And you know I'm subscribed to you. I'm subscribed to a few of your channels. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and there's this one video, I think you titled it, um, you got the table up in Harlem, what people say, yeah. and there's this sister who came up to the table, and then she started just she had to be every bit of no disrespect of 40, 50, you know, or she looked like she was pushing 50 and she was still yeah. started busting out rapping. And she, she's talking about like, she had to, I don't know, like 
like the she she had the stick. She's about you know what I'm saying like she was gonna slide with the Draco and all that. Like it was just mm-hmm. wild. And I've you know we've all seen that. We've all seen yeah. that type of thing, and it becomes yeah. interesting. But then you start to say like, man, what is in their mind? What what do they yeah. think of on a on a on a regular basis to make them get to a point that when they interact with you, <laughs> that comes out. You feel what I'm saying? What was they this thinking is why d- the whole day when they would say, yo, when I come up the mic, they know I mean, I mean, <laughs> you, say, this brother right here on the table, I'm going to bust this rap. And, and she you. sees me every day. <laughs> this is, that wasn't a stranger. She, I try to, I try to look up in the air when she coming my way. She come my, <laughs> I try to look the other way. You know what I'm saying? So, but that day, you know, that was a performance. You know, and it's like, I'm really not trying to capture all of this on film, but it comes to me so much that I'm like, man, I got this guy. Otherwise, I might as well make some content because this is content. <laughs> yeah, you, brother. You get it? Yeah. I can't I help it. I feel you. I go from one side of the town to the next, and here they come. Right. Listen, the channel I'm talking about is Live My Eyes for Mental Health. L-I-V-E, so y'all can check that out. Some of that is on this channel too. Like the last short, I just I met Magneto. You might want to pull it up. You want to pull up Magneto? I don't. I don't have you can pull it up right now. Okay, yeah, but I I met Magneto. Somebody walking around with a Magneto helmet. Wow, just the same. Right, just the same. Right, (laughs) same deal. Yeah. That's and real. I like comic books. I ain't mad. Cosplay is cool. <laughs> as well. Yeah, man. That's a real thing. Um, on the flip side, I, I want to say that that um that section you did, I want to salute you on the section you did with um the brother, the elder, um Dapper Dan, man. Yo, that is he was dropping some gems on that one. I I not to take you off, but yo, that that's that was powerful. I, I like. I like that conversation you had with the brother. So thank you. I wanted to go in even more. You understand? But the way it was, I was working outside all day in the rain. So much. I was like, man, why'd I do this to myself? Why I come outside and work in the rain? Why have a no days off philosophy? Why? So I went through all of that, packed up live in the rain, whatever, went home. I was on my way home. I see Dapper. Now, sometimes I see him. And I'm just like, man, I'm not trying to be, you know, he probably gets this all the time. I'm going to just leave him alone. I might just wave and keep walking because, you know, I don't want to, you know, ask him for an interview every time I see him. But this day I was like, man, I had such a bad day out there on the street. Meaning like it was just the wet, the rain, just, just I was soaking wet. I made a few dollars, but I was soaking wet. And it wasn't, I could have stayed home and did something else. So um, I was like, man, let me just get an interview with him. So, you know, he's eating his little, sa- his uh, Danish. And I was asking him a question. Oh, what you think about Puff Daddy? You know what I mean? But then to the point, like, just to show you how, like, I thought that day was a throwaway day. And if you see, I got over 950,000 views on that video, almost a million views. On that one video, on that short, I got a ch- channel. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm glad you liked it. But I'm saying all that to say, too, is like I really wanted to pick and pry and be like, nah, your answer wasn't good enough. Give me more. But I had to just let him eat his Danish and just accept the answer he gave me. <laughs> right, right. But that was enough, though, for the content. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it worked off of that. So, yo, that was, that was nice. That was a good But look. next time I see him, I'm going to have, like, three questions lined up. Like, I'm going to say, All right, well, what have you ever seen Puffy's parents do to make you say it didn't just come from him? It comes from his parents. What have you, like, come on, tell me something. You can't just say it didn't just start with him and tell me you grew up with his parents. And that's what, you know what I mean? Because I have to... You, you're not telling me nothing. I have to um, figure it out. You know, he kind of talked. He gave me a riddle. He gave me a riddle. He gave me a riddle. 
Yeah, yeah. But that that you know that's that's how the that's how them old players do. Oh geez. <laughs> oh geez, no <laughs> too. You, really? you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> They're gonna hit you with that. When you read the comments, man, the comments, I didn't know whether to block the comments or or to or or what. You know what I'm saying? Because some of the comments were were bad, disrespectful. And then some of the comments was, you know, you know. But uh it, that was, you know, I hope let me see. I think I think I might be at a million views right now. I never had a video get a million views. This might be the one. Yeah, I think. See, look, I'm going to show you right now. A crackhead knocked my phone out of my hand, so it's beat up. But look. You can't see. You can't see, see it. Says, I can't even see it. It says 1.3 million. Oh, I see it now. 1.3 mil. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah. That's not that video. That's just my channel in general. Let okay. Let's see that. Let's see that video. Okay, nine hundred and sixty-six thousand. It's up there. Maybe in like two, three days. Oh, nine hundred and seventy thousand. Yeah, that that's that's what's up. It's gonna get there. It's definitely gonna get there. Yeah. So. I'm excited. I'm excited about that, you know? Yeah, that's a good look, brother. Definitely, definitely. We um, could go live on this channel, too, another time on on, on um Live My Eye for Mental Health with this one and see how that does. Like, today I just went live outside. You know, I think I had 66,000 people watching, you know? That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> Yo, salute. I don't salute. have that many followers. But you can't have that many followers. You you building off their content. Yeah, That's six thousand one hundred people watching on the live today on on my other channel. Yeah, I was like, yo, when I ended the live, I couldn't believe it. But it's only four likes, yo. Look at that. That's crazy. I don't know if you can see it, but it's only four likes out of six thousand yeah. people watching. But yeah, yeah, that's that's a good look, man. Definitely, definitely, brother. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm gonna yeah. ask him about some Marvel stuff next time. I'm gonna figure out a way. I'm going to figure out a way. Oh, because he probably did something for Luke Cage. He was on, I think he was on Luke Cage. He was on Luke Cage. Yo, we got to play that back. Yeah, he so, was on Luke Cage. He definitely was. What? I, f I forgot. What, what did he do on Luke Cage? He he, I forgot. There was a scene where he was dressing him. Or doing something for him because you know he had the club and all of that. Yeah, he had to have been in Luke yeah. Cage. Yeah, he had to have been in Luke Cage. Yeah, he was on there. Oh, so I gotta watch that again and I'm gonna question him on that, you know? Yeah. Maybe one time, you know, maybe one time we can get him to go to go live with us. You know what I mean? Something we gotta right. figure something out. Right, right. No doubt. No doubt. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you know he got a wealth for knowledge, man. And um I was um I, rem I remember when he was on Breakfast Club, and he was dropping little things here and there. It let you know he 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 definitely got some knowledge himself. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know he he's keeping fly, but he he definitely he's no fool by no no stretch of the imagination. And what he did for hip hop, you know, just fashion wise, man, like he's a legend. He's a living legend. So that's a good look, man. Definitely. So uh yeah, I mean it's it's like I say, man, I see him like I saw him the other day walking down the street after we did the interview. And you know, he was dressed sharp. He was like, I really wanted to take a picture and get an interview just because of his outfit was so fly. And I'm like, I just I couldn't do it. I'm just like uh, I'm like, I just ran up to him. I'm like, yo, look, uh we got uh I think at that time it was like thirty thousand views, it wasn't that many. I was like, yo, the video's doing good. I right, I'll see you later. Take care. And he was like, yo, I'm going to stop by later and see you again. But I ain't see him. You know what I'm saying? But next time I see him, I'm going to have to do another interview. <laughs> right, right. No I'm doubt. I have to say, look, we got a, we almost got a million views. I think we need to sit down and talk. 
That's what's up. He might even make you. He might even make you. Um, y'all might even collab and do a um, uh, Dapper Dan Gucci Crown, man. No, listen. He's with Gap now. A word? Yes. Listen. Right across the street from where I set up my table, the Gap Factory outlet. If you walk inside, you're not gonna find Gap. GAP. You're gonna find DAP. Mm. DAP. Wow. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the gap? Changing gap to anything else other than no. that? Okay. So when you say he's a smart man, not a fool by any means, or anyhow. How do you convince the look gap? I want you look. Y'all been around for years, but let's 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 dap instead of gap. Let's do that. And he got it. So you can go in there and you can buy a dap sweatsuit, not gap, dap. Man, he he's a god, man. I ain't even gonna front. That's 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 a god move right there. You know what I'm saying? On some real. On some real metaphysical, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, he came from the street. He don't come from the traditional route and fashion. He come from the street. He come from the streets of Harlem. And he making and them bow to him. And been successful on the underground. And he making them bow to him. Like, that's, it's it's unheard of, man. And still just I cool think- down the earth. Yo, that's that's unheard of, man. I think it has to do with people like you and I and positions of power in those companies. Because who would even have the sense to do that? When he has his, what they call it, uh, drop parties, when he drops his gear, all you see in Harlem is people walking around, not a gap bag, a dap bag. That's all you see. Everybody's walking around with a brown bag. You got the brown and gold colors. And it says dap. And they happy, they skipping, they kicking their feet. They got their brand new outfit. <laughs> they and got I can't sell bag. them nothing. I got my table out there. I can't sell them nothing. They got their <laughs> dap bag. And they don't see me. They don't see me. They don't see me when they got that dap bag. They feel like when it when it's the when the they world. got that dap, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's, they're on top of the world with that bag. That's what's up. You know. And it's like, I wonder, I, I bet, I, I mean, he's probably seen it, but if he could just sit down with me at my table and watch the people walk by, he's probably seen it. They're so happy to, have, you know, went to the Gap and bought some Dap, you know? Yeah. And it looks good on everybody. Right, right. It looks good. Like, those suits, they look fly. I, want, I, need, I need one. Yeah, I should be, I'm surprised I should have bought one already. No doubt. You know, I should have I should have marched right over there. So so yeah, we gotta go into the um maybe we could do something on Luke Cage. We can speak about that next time. His appearance on Luke Cage. Okay. After we re- we can rewatch it. Okay. Bet. Right? And, and, yeah. and speak about that. And because oh yeah, we could definitely do that. Cause I'll see him and I'll ask him about it. And then we could play the video and then we could talk about it. Okay. Okay. That's that you know what I'm saying. So next That's time cool. I see him, I'm gonna ask him about his his experience on Luke Cage, and then we'll 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 video review it. Okay, no doubt. That's peace. That's peace. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then to get back to the to to the Eternals, Eternals man, yeah, like, yeah. You kind of digress, but yeah, getting back to the Eternals. So we we were speaking in, in terms. I think how we got to this was the whole thing about the demi urge. Oh, mm. and um. You know. Yo, but check this though, because we know from what we study, this is why I said, ooh, now check this out. This is the main thing. What about the spell? Oh, the, spell, the spell of the Oh, ah, the spell of Kingo. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I was going to go with it. I was going to go with it. I'm glad you mentioned that, brother. I'm glad you mentioned that. So, yeah, Kingo is Kingo. Right, that's also on um, the Babylonian Sumerian 
spell it with that. And King Go, now here's the here's the ill thing, right? King Go in the Sumerian text, King Gu is the husband or the consort of Tiamat. And there they had Tiamut. Tiamut was the celestial that was to rise out of earth. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. you see? You see what I'm saying? I want you to break it down because I know you know all of this. I know you study. So yeah, so the Tiamat. That's crazy. Yeah, Tiamat, which they said was Tiamut, was that celestial that was supposed to break out and they, they kept Tiamut. And Tiamat is another name for earth, isn't it? Yes. Or is it different? Name for, okay. Yes, name for Earth. It's a name yeah, for Earth. name for Earth. Yep. Gaia, Tiamat. Gaia, Tiamat. Yeah. What else? Um, man. Gaia, Tiamat. Um, my name. The names escape me right now. Yeah, for me too. Uh, Geo. Yeah, Geo. Geo. Yeah, Geo Gi. Um, in Arabic, it's odd. Um, in Hebrew, I think it's Eretz. Yeah, it's, it's a couple of names. Um, I see, yeah, I see uh, what, but let the audience know as far as Kingu. Now, Kingu is the spell that was put over who? Over what people? Oh, yeah, the Lulu Amalu. Yeah, so that was dealing with um, the human beings, the, the, that's dealing with the whole Anunnaki aspect. Oh, Rakim777 says, peace, bro. Brother Shem L and Mike L. Peace, brother. Peace, Rakim. Peace to the God. Indeed. Yeah, we um trying to make you elaborate on uh, I know we got the Lulu Amalu, but what do you what are you trying to speak to? Well, I mean, as far as uh if you study uh Nuap, Nuapu, right? Um, yeah. The new app, right? if, I, if I understand correctly, it said mm -hmm. Kingu was the spell cast upon uh, the so-called FBAs. Right, Did right. The whole, the so, well, yeah, when Dr. York... I don't want to say so-called so Why are you asking Yeah, the, when he said he, he was referring to not just what they call FBAs, meaning here in America, but all Nubians. Planet Earth? Yeah, he was... All, yeah. all Nubians. All yeah, Nubians. all Nubians, uh, which would be the 90 Under Nubians. the spell of Kingu. Right, but the all Nubians are not nine ether though. Nubian no, means brown. Not, right, Nubian means brown. I'm going. I'm using old terms, right? So okay. he never. So when you got to recognize when I use Nubian, I'm going back to Ansar days. But when he came up during the right knowledge, that's when really the he sw it, it he introduced Kingu then because prior to then oh. it was just Kala Levia thing. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, right. thank you, thank you, um, Maximilian Studios. Terra, Terra is another Terra, name. Terra, yeah, Terra, yeah, yeah. Like Terraform, Terra, yeah. Yeah, that's right, that's right, Terra. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. but uh, yeah. So Kingu was connected with the Lulu Amalu when they when they started talking about that, and then of course you're dealing with six ether versus, I mean nine ether versus six ether. So you had the nine. When you say Lulu Amalu, you're talking about between from, from Adam, from Hawa and Lulu, Lulu Amalu. Amalu is a term that was used in the books for primitive worker. So that's Adam and Eve. In a sense, yeah. But this really is predating. Not saying Genesis they were the too. first people, but right. that lineage of the Twa with the with the with the Zulu, right? With, um, the Twa or the or the Pygmy with the Watusi. With the with the Watusi. Watusi okay, the Pygmy yeah. with the Watusi. That's the yeah, Lulu that, Amalu. The is that the I'm, that's what I'm asking you. Yeah, well, yeah, in a sense, yeah. The Twa, the Twa, okay. Pygmy, yeah, the All Pygmy. Right. The Twa with the with the Watusi. And I may be right. I may be a little off on on some because a lot of those books I haven't read in a while. But just going off my memory, um. Kingu dealing with the Lulu Amalu. That, that's when he was introducing the Sumerian um, information. When he introduced that, he bring he brought in Kingu, Tiamat, uh, Lulu Amalu, the whole thing with Inki and Enlil, um, fighting for control of the uh, 
the humans and things of that nature. So, so I saw a lot of that story in the Eternals. Yeah, a lot of that is because that's that's from the old Sumerian text. So that whole yeah. that whole thing about so you're dealing with the Enuma Elish, the Gilgamesh epics, Gilgamesh, epics, Gilgamesh. Yeah. Um, Atrahasis. You know, a lot of those ancient Sumerian texts where you're dealing with the gods, so to speak, fighting over control of the of the earth. So Druig, to that point. Druig is the only one that I know. He may it may be might be another one, but Druig is the only one that I can think of off top whose name is not tied to a god or or a hero in mythology. And Druig was the one who was controlling the minds. Hypnotizing, yeah. Yeah, he was hypnotizing. So and that, that's the spell of King Go, though. That's the spell of King Go. But King, but the funny thing, he didn't have the name King Go. Kingo yeah, was, but that's that. That's but he what was I doing the spell to be what Druid was doing. What Druid was doing was the spell of Kingo, right? The spell exactly. Yeah. He had them under the spell exactly. You see, so that's why now can you see why I think like someone like you should just be knowledgeable about the movie because they might come out with a part two. It might be better, but like that's why I think someone like you would 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 you know find it interesting at the least. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I said, I did find I found the science in it. I was able to pick up on it immediately. Um, exactly. Yeah, immediately I was able to pick up on it. Yeah, um, so, so I, I like it because of that, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, the Eternals themselves would be equivalent to a couple of things. One, there were ten. There were ten Eternals. I mean, in the comic book, there's more than 10 Eternals. They actually said they made 100 Eternals. But here is 10. 10 is symbolic of the Sephira, of the Kabbalistic tree, the 10 Sephira, right? And if you know the Kabbalistic tree, you have the top one would be Ketha, right? And then all the way down to the bottom one is Malkuth. From what I gathered, based on what I, I watch, Ajax, which is Ajax, right? Um, the Greek hero, Ajax, um, was considered, would be considered, would be considered Ketha or the crown, because she was the leader. And she was the one who was closest to Arashim. Remember, she was always talking to Arashim. Yeah. So she would be represent the Ketha, the crown. Circe, Circe, which is spelled S-E-R-S-I, -I, is really a play off of the, um, the Greek goddess Circe. Iron? Nah, Circe, C-I-R-C-E. -C -E. It's a play off of a Greek goddess. They did a phonetic thing, just the way they did with Macari. Makari, Mercury, uh -huh. did the Mercury. same thing as Thirsty. They just phonetically spelled the Greek name and mm. um, who's an enchantress, right, in the Greek mythology. So she would represent Malkuth because she was more closest to the humans. If you recognize, they, they did that playback. She immediately connected with the humans. That's why Ajax chose her. Because she had the most compassion, at least at that time, of all humans. She immediately, she knew that she immediately had the compassion for the humans. I think Ajax, I didn't like Ajax as an actor in that movie either. Yeah, that's, and she's a known actress too. I didn't like it. I don't, oh, what's I don't, that? Summer, Summer Halak? Or, I yeah, yeah, I, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, it was okay, but I feel like they could None control of, somebody better. None of them did was. You, what, how did you feel? None of them was was ex extraordinary in terms of their acting. Yeah, not extraordinary. Like I said, I don't. I'm not. None of them. None of them. I tell you, the the one that got me the most, that like I felt, I don't know what it was, but Sprite, her that role of, of Sprite was um like I kind of didn't. I didn't like Sprite. Um, I didn't like the personality of the person Sprite. Like. The character, like I don't, I don't like people that act like that. But that's what made me think she was a good actor. 
You get what I'm saying? Right. Like right. I didn't like Sprite's attitude at all. Like I don't like like the way she was just always down and bummed out and, mm -hmm. and I just didn't but that's what made me think she was a good actor, played the part well. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You yeah. know, but um I can't really say and and Icarus, the hero. Oh, you know what I like? My favorite character was King Goo. Why? Why would you say that? Just because he was corny and cheesy and like <laughs> like I thought he was a like, like yeah, he was so corny, like he was so corny that I liked him. And I don't I know he's a popular actor and I don't follow any of his movies. Yeah. Like I I think he did Kmar or something or Oh Kmar. yeah, yeah, he's like you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I don't I don't I don't never seen none of that. But his role, I I, I thought it was hilarious when he was like a a a, 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 a Bollywood a, actor. Yeah, Bollywood actor. Like yeah. that shit was hilarious. Yeah. And, his, and then um oh, and then my other favorite person was his 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 assistant. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Remember his assistant with the yeah, camera. With the camera. Yo, that was I see. I like stuff like that. That was funny to me. Right. He's like, why would I want to go here when I can be with the heroes from the Eternals? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like his whole, you know what I mean? If it's if that shit was yeah. funny to me. Yeah, that, that was the comic relief. That, that shit was, cool. was funny to me. It was, that um, shit was funny to me. His whole skit was funny. Everything about <laughs> yeah. that shit was funny. Yeah, it was um that was it was some interesting stuff there. I would say that, uh, like I said, to me, I was more into the story than than the acting. For me, like the story, I thought the storyline, I could re I could follow it, and it made sense based on what I studied. Like, um, yeah, just the whole concept of the the Eternals being sent. Then you had the all. This is the other aspect of the Eternals. The Eternals were supposed to um, fix the mistake of the Deviants. Now, the Deviants, this is the this is the thing I wanted to, to share. Um, if you look up on the on the comic side, mm -hmm. the Eternals and Deviants have scientific names. You know, like you have Homo sapien, Homo erectus, right? Mm -hmm. Eternals are called Homo um, immortalis. And the deviants are called homo descendants, right? So homo means man. So immortalis, of course, means immortal. So that's immortal, immortal man. Descendants, so descendants mean, of immortal man, or descendant, like a falling, fallen man. Okay. You catch what I'm saying? That's nephilim. Yeah. So they they yeah. they, they represent the nephilim. Yeah. And also, the story uh, in the Quran, they also represent like the Iblis versus the angels. Because when they're in heaven, Adam, who the, what of course, it, the smoke, Adam, what kind of smoke? The smokeless um, fire. Um, smokeless fire, Naruto Samun. Smokeless. Okay, right. the smokeless That's fire. Ten, right. So Iblis wouldn't bow down to the human, wouldn't bow down to Adam, who's the Khalifa. Right, successor on the earth, Khalifa art, but the angels mm -hmm. had no will of their own. They all bowed down. You catch mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So the angels, those angels, it would be like the Eternals. Like the Eternals, just like 180 work. degrees of agreeable and 180 degrees of disagreeable. That in that context, and also they didn't have a will of their own in terms of they couldn't. Those angels, they could only be only a, the one will of the Most High. You know what I'm saying? Only 180 de agreeable. Right. While Iblis could choose to do oh, be, be down with it or refuse. And Iblis being the rebellious one rebelled. So th the story that they give in the movie is that originally the Deviants were doing the work of Arashim. Yeah, yeah. They were doing the work, but then at some point they rebelled. Because they what became when when they became more intelligent, they rebelled, right? Exactly, exactly. So then, so, so you had to have the angels so, come ahead and fix that. So he said, "You wouldn't have the." He said something to the effect of, "You wouldn't have the will to go against what I do 
purposely. So the Eternals <laughs> are equivalent of the ant. But the wait, but wait, what was the original mission of the Eternals? The original mission of the Eternals was to protect the humans from the deviants. Okay, yeah, but the original, but the deviants were doing what they were supposed to do. The deviants right? were sent originally there in order to, um, they were supposed to protect the humans as well, but they were protecting them from like, they, they show like the, um, the dinosaurs and all of that stuff. So from yeah, the yeah. natural creatures that were bigger and stronger than the humans, that were eating the deviants, the, yeah. yeah, they were they were able to. But then the deviants to, turned on the humans. Eat, yeah, they turned on the humans. And, See, and that's the, whole, the part I thought that was corny. That but you gotta uh, you gotta follow up. Dinosaurs. Oh, the dinosaur part. Like they they had to eat the dinosaurs because the deviants are kind of like dinosaurs. You get what I'm saying? So it's like right. How could the the deviants are, the deviants are more horrific than the dinosaurs? Yeah, yeah. So, well, I get it though. I mean, I guess it's a, it's a comic yeah. book, so well, the, it the was, deviants are like good dinosaurs, good monsters. No, but that's dinosaurs. the movie flip. Remember, we just spoke about that in the comic yeah. book. They're humanoid. In the comic okay, book, uh, they're not, yeah, they're so not animals. Right, yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so they just it up. Just, and, Bro, and, this is like the worst selling action figure ever. He said, let's show that. He said that's the worst action figure. The worst selling action figure. Oh, okay. I, I think it looks cool and I could do a lot with it with stop motion animation. But like I bought it thinking like this is gonna go up in value and it went down in value. All of these figures went down in value. You can get this whole set for like $75. Maybe when you less, say maybe set, like fifty-eight dollars, huh? When you say a set, how many come in a set? There's six. There's a builder figure, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven figures to build Gilgamesh. So it's eight figures in total, and they didn't make an Ajax figure. Nobody wanted it. They made a Makari. Well, I don't know. They made a Marvel Sprite. They made a Cersei. They made a Fausto, they made a King Goo, and they made a Druid. But you said there's 10, and there's only they only made eight. So who's missing? Can you figure it out? Okay. Name name them real quick. Which ones you see there? Okay. Makari. Makari. No, no. Icarus. 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 Makari. Makari. Sprite. Sprite. Cer Cersei. Fausto. Cersei. Fausto. King Goo. And Druid. Drew. And Gilgamesh and Gilgamesh, those Gilgamesh. are the ones they have. Athena, Athena, and oh, Ajax, oh. Athena and Ajax. Oh, oh, maybe they do have an Ajax. Okay, because I got Athena right here. She's just not on the box. Okay. See, I got Athena right here, but she's not a part of the builder figure. Okay. So maybe they do, because I think I did see Ajax. Maybe they have an Ajax. It's just not part of the builder figure. But like I'm telling you, like I like the wardrobe. Like I like these action figures just for the wardrobe. Like I think this would make a cool little shelf. Like I haven't taken them out the box, but I think this would make a cool little display. Like all these eternal figures. Mm -hmm. But it just it's just like this dude is corny as hell. Look at him. But you say you like him. You say you like I mean, I like him only because he's corny. He's <laughs> it's just it's, he's hilarious. I, I mean, yeah, he's corny. The way he take his finger out and shoot that shit was corny as hell. That shit was corny. <laughs> what did you think when he was shooting with his finger? I mean, I like, like yeah, just man, the way like, he did it. His whole his whole energy. <laughs> Yeah, that, that I thought yeah, I thought a lot of that stuff. I thought a lot of their um fighting scenes weren't that great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean I, it's just speaking it. from what I saw, the the coolest fighter didn't even really fight 
the deviance. That was Thena. Like she, as far as her weapon, yeah. I yeah. thought she, I thought she was, she was good in that action, but she kept fighting against her own team. So it's like, <laughs> it was like I was waiting for her to really start putting in work. I was like, nah, she keep fighting. She her mind is gone. She keep fighting her own, trying to kill her. Yeah, the sticks and the bones. Yeah. What was that about? I know you could break down on a laugh, but she had the sticks and the bones. Remember? The sticks and the bones. Remind she me. She had sticks and bones hanging. It was like, you know, it was like something cultural stuff, but yeah. I don't I don't you yeah, I like to... I don't know what to call it. I I'm not even gonna lie to you. I have to watch it again to really catch what you yeah, I, I don't sticks think I played the bones hanging. Too. I mean, she really did a, a good job of looking like a crazy woman. She really looked bugged out. Yeah. I'd be scared of her. <laughs> she that might be that in real life. I mean, see, like, I could see, see, I could, like, that movie, see, I'm, I'm, I could look at that shit and just laugh. Like, I could look at that whole, like, I could watch that movie in a different way and just laugh. Like, this shit is just funny, like, on some... Like some mushroom shit, you know. When you, if you ever do mushrooms, you just be laughing at everything. I could do that without mushrooms, and that movie would be the movie to do it to. <laughs> he said that movie would be the movie to do it to. Yeah, you could just laugh. That shit was. I mean, because I, I kept waking up in the middle of it, so it really didn't make sense. Every part I saw really didn't make sense. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the first two times I watched it, I did watch it straight through. But that was when it first came out. But this time, I was like lucid dreaming, like trying to watch that shit. Like, you know what I mean? Because I was like, we going live tonight. I gotta watch it. I gotta be fresh. I gotta, you gotta be fresh in my mind. You know what I mean? Right, right. So, <laughs> so what did you remember of what you did watch? Like, what stuck out of what you was awake for? What stuck out the most? Oh, real quick, um, Rock Kim said the Deviants invaded Olympia. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that's I remember that scene. Olympia. What? See, I couldn't figure out what was an illusion, and what was real. Oh, you talking about yeah. when they when they were? Remember, there was like this is Olympia, and it beat up. It was like a computer simulation. It wasn't really there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You, you remember yeah. that? Like that movie? I got. I, I'm not going to front. I didn't understand that movie. Right. Was right. it easy to understand? Because maybe because I was I to I me because I kept falling asleep. I, I understood it. I understood it because I kind of followed the whole. Like I said, because I know a lot of the stories are based in Gnosticism, Kabbalah. You know what I'm saying? I knew. I knew to follow that. If I was just watching it. I'm gonna be honest, and I didn't know what I knew. That wouldn't make sense to me either. But okay. I know, the, I know the story of the demiurge. I know the story of the Elohim and the, and the Nephilim. So to follow that in that context, it make I can follow it. You know what I'm saying? It makes sense because I can put it in parallel to what I already know. But to kind of just it went it went everywhere. The time it kept jumping time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, um, what was it? What was it? Seven thousand years, and then it went to seven days, and then yeah, it kept jumping. That's why, especially if you fall asleep during a movie like that, you didn't know what time. If you would have did, then you probably didn't know what time period they were in when you woke up. Yeah. Was it was it modern day? Was it five thousand yeah. years ago? Five hundred years ago? Yeah, because it, oh, it was gosh. time traveling. It was jumping back and forth. They never did it in a chronological order as far as the scenes. But I figure if you pay attention, that's what makes it really cool. I just wasn't paying attention. Right. You know? But like I said, I figure someone like you would see that movie and, you know, get more from it than the average person. Right. And even a play know? on the seven days, you know, that deals with like the seven days of creation. The creation. Yeah. And then 7,000 so, years, because the 7,000 years deals with, it is more so, that's Kabbalistic. You know what I'm saying? As far as a day being 1,000 years and 1,000 years being a day, so seven days, 7,000 years. So, yeah, to your point. 
And so, so I wonder what you would what. I mean, I don't want to get too far ahead, but I stop. But I'll just ask you now. But what would you, what would you rate this movie like? Uh, mm. Like to, if you were to be fair, like to be fair. Um, yeah. when you say I mean, I want to give it two ratings, different ratings almost. Between I what? Give it like. a metaphysical rating, a metaphysical rating. Uh huh. Or, or let me just ask you this. Personal, your personal enjoyment, one through ten. My personal enjoyment of the movie. Hmm. Being nice, I'm gonna say five. Okay. Maybe, maybe five, six, between one to ten. And that's only because there was so much, like in the beginning, we talked about this the agenda and all the other nonsense you had to get through. That's what made it that low. You know what I'm saying? If they didn't, if they didn't do the unnecessary stuff in there, as far as the the, the whole that agenda, I I would have I would have rated it higher for personal enjoyment. That that made it hard to watch. Um oh. but I can get past the the subpar acting because it's a comic, you know what I'm saying? I didn't I didn't the story was good enough to where, minus what I just mentioned, I could have rated it higher because the story, to me, it dropped so much knowledge in it. That mm. That's what kept me interested. And that's yeah. that's why I suggested that we watch this because, you know, just because I figure you just get a kick out of it. Know what you know? I, I, I'm familiar with a little some of the literature that you that you read, you know, so I figure you just, you know, you get a kick that somebody was dropping at, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I I'll, I'll can say that, honestly, the, the storyline of it and the science behind it, I thought was really good. I, I would have hoped, like, that's just a personal thing. I would have hoped they would have written it better, you know what I'm saying? And kept with the, left the extra stuff alone, but outside of that, I think I think that's a storyline or a basis of another type of movie you can do without those characters, and it could be even better, if th if that makes sense. In other words, you could still have that type of thing, but it not be the Eternals, but it still drops that science in that context. Yeah, and it'd be way better than the Eternals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so too. Yeah, I think so too. And are you a are you um there's another question I want to ask before I ask this one. Um well I, I just I know I should ask something else. I want to ask, are you anticipating a part two? But there's something else I should ask before I ask that. Okay. Um well, if you want me to answer that, I can answer that right now. But God, go ahead, go ahead. I don't anticipate a part two. Oh man! I now, had a question before that, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. yeah, I don't. The reason why I say I don't anticipate a part two is because, to your point, it receives you personally. I'm saying, huh? No, I'm saying you personally. Like, do you want to see a part two? To that, if it's the same characters, I don't know. That's t that's tough. No, I remember the question. It's it's yeah. tough. I would want I would want to see new characters. If they do a part two, I would want to see a lot. Now, oh, to that point, they did try to introduce two new characters at the end. Did you catch that? I fell asleep, but I woke up, but I, I missed it. But yeah, yeah I, to, was it was the, the after the credits scene. Yeah, after the credit scene. I think I, I, good. I might remember it. Yeah, it was like two. Be there, there were. I think there were also Eternals. Okay, I forgot, but I remember like like. Like I said, I was like this, like yeah, trying to watch it, like trying to keep my eyes. You know when you're trying to yeah. keep your eyes open. Yeah, that's how I was. Yeah, I would have to see <laughs> new, new characters for me to and be. So, yeah. All right. So, do you think Marvel would have been better off not putting that movie out at all, 
Like, did it do a did it did it put a dent? Because, like I said, I think you have to see this to understand the whole Marvel universe. It helps you get get a better understanding of what's going on in the Marvel universe. You no, know? I think they could have did. Don't they play a significant role. Yeah, they do. But I I think they could have did it without doing the Eternals. They could have had. I think that what they should have did was have a situation because in the, even in the comic books, a lot of those Eternals were part of other groups like the God Squad, Avengers, etc. at certain times. So I would have, my thought is have one or two Eternals showcase them in different groups and you build the character of that Eternal. You know what I'm saying? So let's say, give the example of, um, I mean, none of them really impressed me like that. But let's say for, for the sake of sake of argument, um, oh, God, Icarus, because mm -hmm. he, he was a main one. Like I said, I, none of them really moved me like that. But let's say Icarus. You have Icarus in another group or another movie that's not related totally to the Eternals. But you get to know his story somewhat, and he you see him in different spaces, kind of like with Thor. You know, what I'm saying he was in Avengers, but you got to know his story by way of event Avengers. You catch what I'm saying? I, I'll tell you this from yeah, and from what I know from Icarus from mythology, and you know, my whole impression of Icarus as far as animation. Is not is, is the video game. Remember Nintendo Kid Icarus? Right, right. You remember that game? Yeah. I used to love that game. So that's my you know introduction to to Icarus. But he didn't have wings, did he? Um, not in the um in, in the Eternals, not in, right? Not in the Etern not in the movie. He didn't have. Yeah, he could so fly, that's why I, I think how could Icarus not have wings, yo? And not have a bow and arrow. Again, isn't, again, isn't Icarus supposed again, to have wings and a bow and arrow? It, exactly. But to your point, again, a lot. Oh, to my point, what I made in the beginning, a lot of those characters have nothing. Are not like the original characters. Yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't like. I like. So I like Icarus didn't have wings. As the idea. But I felt he should at least have some like. Holographic wings or something. He didn't have wings. And a bow and Fisto's arrow. Fistos didn't have a hammer. Before. He was supposed to have a hammer. Fest, Fest, Fistos was supposed to have a hammer. He didn't have a hammer because he's a god of blacksmith. And, and, and this is what I want you to. Do. You might, but isn't that the Ogun? Which which deity or, or it is, which deity? That is Ogun. Yeah. So. I don't know if you know about that, but I thought that was cool because that's Ogun. But they made Ogun a what's the name? Yeah, they made Ogun a uh, uh, oh, what's the name? Billy Porter. They made him a oh, um, little Nas X. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's messed up. So, yeah. So that that but oh. that's on purpose though. You see what I'm saying? That's that's their agenda. That's their agenda. It's repeated. They, they're always doing that. We've talked about this in, in other in our other live streams. This is intentional. It's intentional. So you know, I, it didn't help them. At the end of that, it, it flopped. You know what I'm saying the movie flopped, so I mean, yeah, that's yeah, and that's probably why they did it too. I mean, that's they, they probably did it not thinking it was, yeah. I mean, I mean, I would have thought it would have done better just because I thought that's what everybody likes, but <laughs> nah, <laughs> not everybody, you nah, know what I mean? That's, that's an nah, illusion, right there. Like, yeah, that's an illusion, <laughs> it's an illusion. That, that's that's what they nah, want. I, 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 actually, I didn't even mean to say that. What I'm saying is that there is a large demographic, there's a large group of people out there. That I thought would uh uh champion that or or you know yeah we got something now you, you get what I'm saying but they I get what you're saying I did think I get that. what you're saying but that doesn't how can I say it that is more prevalent in music than in film 
if you notice. If you think about it. But, but the music, this is the bottom line. Is, this is the bottom line. Everybody gets a superhero. You get a superhero. You get a superhero. You get a superhero. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to do that. Okay, that's cool. But the problem becomes... I, at least me, this is I, at least this is just my thought, and I, again, I, I'm not involved in it. You you you're changing the original characters to do that. You feel what I'm saying? Playing it out. You have Playing to do it, it. Just introduce the character, a new one, a new character right. of that community. Yeah. And, and and they they realize they can't even do that. <laughs> they can't even do that. So, you know. But like you said, they try to do that with America Chavez. Right. Yep. So that's a new character, I think, right? That's a new mm -hmm. character. Relatively new. Relatively new. Yeah. But still, yeah, but it's still a playoff of, if I'm not mistaken, it's a playoff of, of an older character, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give it. I'll give that. I'll give that. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, but again, I I think I think we kind of spoke to it in in a previous one. They don't have a lot of. They can't create a lot of new stuff. They're not creating really anything new. They're just taking old stuff and and trying to put a spin on it. Because Eternals, they all of this is old stuff. Eternals is. But that, old. I mean, that's 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 cool though. Because the way I see it is they didn't have the means to do what they're doing now at that mm -hmm. time. And plus, technology wasn't the same. So back then, everything was on paper. Mm -hmm. And they might have had a vision. You know, we want to turn, we want everything to be on film. So now they're just, you know, catching up, you know, with, with the things that were on paper. That's why I see all this comic book stuff from Marvel. I, I, I can I can get that to a certain degree, to a degree. I don't know because I think. Let's be honest. Who was really up on Eternals as a comic book? I keep that a hundred. Yeah, I it. mean, I, I wasn't. I didn't Never. know. But but just just like Secret Wars, just like Agents of Shield. I think it's you know all that stuff they do. Um, like all the Marvel comic books, I think in time you'll see it in film, and that's like part of the plan for them and part of the vision, you know. So whack, they want to put it in film just because it's part of the collection. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, then that's how they do with the action figures. Yeah, and then you They're also just, do it. It's cataloging. It's cataloging, and then you also have the other aspect. Of um, now you're dealing with public domain. Yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying. Disney recently went in public right. domain. D Disney, Mickey Mouse, and all that. We and and I'm saying that because we just had a conversation. I did a class and talked about copyright in public domain. Like a lot of this stuff is going to go into public domain if it hasn't already. So it's it's like coming my well. I might we might as well jump on it now. Yeah, that's what it is. Ahead of the curve because I, I think that's what it uh, is. Yeah, not you know? so yeah. it's like they've already got a superhero called Faustos. Nobody else can do it. You get what I'm saying? But that's why you'll see they have like some of the characters, it'll say I don't can't think of one now, but it'll say Marvel's King Goo. Mm-hmm. To distinguish yeah. it from it somebody else's anyone else's King Go. Right. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like, I think this one says it. It'll yeah. say Marvel's Electra. Yeah. Yeah. Electra. Not so sure. Now, nah, but you get my point. You I get what, what you mean? point. That's I get exactly what you point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this one. It says Marvel's Hammerhead. Right. Which means that they there could be another hammerhead out there exactly. to use. Yeah, but they want to, you know, but they want to, you know, put the foot down. You know what I mean, so there's, there's ways around it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they they're very well aware of that copyright and the public domain aspect of it. 
because uh, that extends to drawings as well, illustrations, not just the written. Uh, but yeah, all of that stuff, man. But yeah, man. Um, so that just kind of wrapping it up, man, because we've been building for over an hour. That's um, good. Yeah. Uh, basically, yeah, what Rakim said, Thor and Loki pushed people towards Eternals. That that's a question. So what what's your thoughts on it? Because I'm not I'm not as I'm not as um, connected with all of the characters, the interconnection of the Marvel universe. Um, I think the Eternals came out before. Well, before Loki. But um, oh, uh, that's a question. Um, yeah, that's a question. Um, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I would say, no, nah, I wouldn't say that. You wouldn't say that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you would know better than I would on that connection. Um, but I definitely, yeah, see, I don't see. But, it, but, but I see the connection, though, because uh, Thor and Loki, those are gods. And the, and the Eternals are not gods the eternals right they're not god they're but not they're god. from olympia i think olympia the connection to olympia olympia is where the gods come from exactly exactly you gotta watch thor love and thunder that's another yeah. one that's kind of like the eternals or i'll put it this way i like it for the same reason that i like the eternals thor love and thunder so question he said eternals was first um in the comic book, or in, I think the movie, in the movie, no, well, Thor, the movie Thor came out before the Eternals. Well, maybe he's talking, in the, in the, or in the context of the um, comic book chronology. I don't know. I don't. Um. Well, yeah, the Eternals is before everybody, right? That's a good question. That's a I good. Think, question. Yeah, the, the the Eternals would have to predate. The gods, I think. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. I get. And my thought of what they were trying to imply, like I said, about that ancient alien that was like the the eternals inspired the, the stories of these gods. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you kind of look at it like these beings that were created were created to do these things. And thus, they were incorporated in this mythology. So the whole Olympia and all of that stuff. But uh, that's a good that's a good question. But I think the Eternals predate all of that. That's when I. That's my thought of it in the terms of how they trying to tell the story. Yeah. That that would be <laughs> one of my context. But yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Interestingly enough, with that said, I think, you know, overall, I don't I don't see them doing another one. They may. They may do it. I think another. they have to. Eh, I don't think they have to. Because if the because I mean the Eternals are supposed to be important to the whole Marvel storyline, right? So how could you never do another movie with them in it? Well, Maybe they'll be in other movies. Like Maybe I said, you can't I just think, forget think, about all those actors. Man, Not because they're actors, the but actors saying, characters that, but the roles that they play in, in the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. See, I think that's what I'm saying. I think they were waiting. It was like about time for for this movie to come out. I think you will have. Wrong. I think they'll have Eternals as a in the context of. They will be eternal, but I, I don't think don't I don't believe that what they brought is was strong enough for us to say we want those characters. If I don't think I really don't. You want to have does are people really looking for um, Kingo again? I think there'll be another Eternals too. You think no, people want Kingo? Think people are, are, are waiting for Kingo? They want to see the Bali, up, They want to see the new Bali movie. No, I don't see. I don't. I don't feel that, son. Man, what about Angelina <laughs> Jolie? Uh, 
You know what I'm saying? I just don't. They they don't might, go crazy. They might, what if they, they put her in the mental home with, with Moon Knight? It don't matter. They could put it. <laughs> they could pff, listen. You remember they, the mental they, home with that Moon Knight was in? She could be in Wakanda right now, man. It don't matter. What was it? What was what was his name again? Moon Knight? Why well, I forget his name? Mr. Why well, I forget his name? I, Moon Knight. I don't what was his know. name again? I don't we, we did a story on Moon Knight. Remember that? No, nah, we didn't do Did Moon we Knight. Do a, we didn't do a show on Moon Knight. Mm -hmm. I did that by myself. Yeah. <laughs> I did that by myself. Yeah, you, you, you. <laughs> Well, I said we did the story of Moon Knight. No, I did that by myself. That was one I did by myself. Yeah. But I, we didn't talk about Moon Knight. No, we didn't talk about Moon Knight. Nope. I did that by myself. You know, I always got to mix something up every show. I'd be like, yo, then we do this. <laughs> Can't wait to do that. Yeah. Before we end, I gotta get something mixed up. Yeah, it's cool, man. So um, yeah, brother. So again, appreciate everybody who uh stayed with us, who joined on the live stream. And um uh, again, before before we do that, always I always wanna um let you plug, go ahead and put your plug in and let the people know how to contact you or check you out on your other channels. Yeah. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. All right. Well, everybody, please subscribe to Comics and Crystals on YouTube. My other channel is Live My Art for Mental Health. But you see this one on the screen. Go check out my stop motion animation, Comics and Crystals. That's the name of the channel. Go check out the animation. Go check out the photos. Check out some of the other lives. You know, I make these crowns. I've got to make some more crowns. This is uh, an older crown. i got to make some more crowns so I can wear them on the live so I can see the, all the different varieties of crowns that I have. But this is my Tuma crown from the Black Panther. And, you know, that's what I do. And the links are in the description of all of my videos. There you have it. Support, support our brother. Comic and Crystals, you know what I'm saying? It's the Copper Chop, Mike L in the building, and your brother, Brother Shamel, again with another one. Appreciate you all. And with that, leave out. Peace. Peace.